So this is a spot where we had some evidence that might have elevated levels of radioactivity. And now we're just gonna come up with some places to be able to take some samples. And I get closer down into this pit right here it sort of buries the needle. And that sort of has me interested, wondering what we might be seeing down here. Considering what you know about the site, do you think North County can really be cleaned up completely? I think that if you have widespread radioactivity that's kind of been moved around by floods and other types of, you know, natural events, it could be a pretty big problem. What, honey? Ball, you want to play with a sticky note? Yeah. Mom, can I I don't. No, honey, I don't really want you to do that right yeah, now. I don't. Can you can you guys go downstairs and play? Why don't you want them out? I there's a weather pattern coming in, and I know that it's going to stink either tonight or tomorrow, and I really don't want them out there. Um, you know, some of this you can smell, some of this you can't, and it's just. It's not something that I'm going to take the chance on. Which is sad, because it looks beautiful out there. We just cut the grass. It would be a great afternoon, perfect temperature for kids to go out. But you know, it's one of the things that we think about living here. We watch the weather, not for rain, not for severe weather, but f to figure out what's going to happen with the landfill or try and predict how it's going to be. It's a shame, isn't it? 
Beautiful neighborhood, nice park for kids to play when it isn't stinking. That's how it is down here. We're kind of hidden back here behind this hill, but it doesn't stop that stench one bit. We didn't hear about the radioactivity until the, the stink of the landfill started. I guess it, if it wasn't for the smell, we, no one would have known about the radioactivity. directly across the street from the landfill. There's no getting around it. We're less than a 1,000 feet. Two days ago, in the evening time, that's what my smoke detector was doing and my carbon monoxide was doing, which notifies me if I need to get inside and close the doors even tighter and put towels up against the bottom of my door. See that lump? My dogs, all of them, have a lump. And then these strawberry things, we don't even know what they are. He has them all over. And they come up, look, they just appear. And they turn into these really super bad sores. He's got all these, and they just make him so miserable. He just tries to do the best he can. Thanks for coming this morning to the neighboring department. We've got this class that's going to be on monitoring nuclear events that's going to be given by the uh, 7th Civil Support Team. It's a four-segment class, and they decided to go ahead and include first responders because we're going to be the ones going in when everybody else is bailing out. I'll turn it over to the guys now to start this class. All right. You're going to see a D-ring to the side. That D-ring, you turn it. It opens up that battery well. Now, uranium is in the ground, is it not? It comes from the Manhattan Project. That's right. The decay product of uranium is radon. What's the problem with radon? It causes Say it again. It causes cancer. Causes cancer is a better emitter. And if it gets out, how easy is it going to be in Missouri to contain people in St. Louis area? It's going to be tough. Now, like those people walk around with all this stuff on them, on their cars, and their goods, take some of that material elsewhere and spread that problem, that's where it was going to become tricky. First, I got a fire underneath the ground. Then I got radioactive material underneath the ground that may be breached by this fire. Danger zone. Time to get out. If you could perform a rescue at that point, I would. Please don't leave me behind. Don't leave your buddy behind. Uh, but it's not a time to decide, what do we do now? Please back out. That's the unfortunate thing, is this all happened in a metropolitan area. It does not belong in a residential slash commercial municipal populated suburban area in the state that it is in right now and has been for the last 40 years. Let's fix it. Let's not just leave it sit out there. If this encroaching underground smoldering event reached where the radioactivity is located, in the incineration of materials, very small particles can be released and those particulates can be contaminated with the radionuclides. What's going to be carried along with those smoke particles are particles of thorium, particles of radium. You know, sometimes particles can be carried five, six miles away from the site where it's burning. You know, I have my escape route planned. I literally do. I have my grab bag, I have it in the car have a little emergency kit, and we go that way. The landfill is that way. We go straight down this street, we make a left, and we go straight. Hello. Hello. Hello, Megan. Okay. We have our questions set up for tonight. You guys want to go through them all real quick and see what we have so far? The EPA has always said that the isolation barrier is the contingency plan. 
And now that the fire could be moving into the North Quarry, what is EPA's plan B uh, if the isolation barrier isn't going to be able to be installed in time to stop a smoldering fire once it moves into North Quarry? I think we should phrase it like that. What is your contingency for the contingency plan that is yeah. the barrier? Right. You know? Um, do you remember what the date was that the EPA called for the barrier? It was last summer, right? It was so they had a year to get all the testing and data that they needed to figure out if they even could or could not do this barrier, and they haven't. They wasted a year. Let's write that one down. Yeah. And the million dollar question is, what happens when the fire meets the waste? No, the waste what meets happens the fire. when the waste That's meets right. the fire? That's right, that's right. I think we really need to hammer that home. When I met Karen, Nickel. She had already created a Facebook page, and so there were maybe about a hundred or so people on it. I joined, we hit the ground running. We created Just Moms because we were told, if you're going to organize and you're going to host public meetings, you have to call yourself something. And we're like, well, we're Just Moms. We're like, we're Just Moms STL, St. Louis. Yeah. I'm going to a meal right now. Yeah, and I'm eating. I gotta go. I'd rather be home with you guys. Yeah, but it might be important stuff. That's right. There'll be lots of important stuff. That's why God made meetings. That's why God made... Oh, that's really actually sad. That's why God made meetings. All right, dog, look out. Look out, let him in, let him in. Thank you, doggy. OK, I got to go. I love you. Oh, no chilling? Is that my dress? Yeah. Man, I don't even have time to try it on. OK, well. He's invited to his first birthday party. Oh, you're going too? Look, it's right there. No, this is Quinn's. Oh, oh. Quinn's okay. invited to his first birthday ah, party. Okay. Okay, bye bye. I love you too. Bye, oh, baby girl. Bye, boy. Bye, boy. I can't say tonight. Well, I don't have the movie tonight. I feel my anxiety rising. I hate that. Literally, like, every time I come to the stoplight, if I'm on my way to one of these meetings, my anxiety level, I can just feel it start in my stomach. And I'm like, I don't know. So much rides on these meetings, it's like do or die, literally. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting to order, please. We have the Army Corps of Engineers make a presentation this evening about radioactive safety levels. All right. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for your time. Uh, we appreciate this chance to come out here and talk a little bit. So we have a lot of data and a very good understanding of the health impacts from radiation at very high doses. What we don't really have is any good data on low levels of exposure and what the harmful effects might be. This equation right here is just sort of a simplified example of how we calculate risk. Um, when we actually input these parameters, we try to use the conservative assumptions for, well, how much could a human being conceivably inhale in a day? Can I just clarify? I, I just took a small question. You said there are no, what'd you say? There's no good data on low level exposure? Correct. So what are these risk models based off of? Risk models are based on data from like atomic weapon survivors, from um, industrial accidents and things like that. Where are the health studies anywhere that show that if I build my home on nuclear weapons waste, what happens to my kids 30 years later? I think you have to understand in terms of Westlake and what we're dealing with and the potential of this fire hitting it and letting it out, you guys could be wrong. Okay, I don't want to interrupt you, Doug, but I'm Mary Peterson with the Environmental Protection Agency, and I'll, I'll take a stab at this as best I can. Um, so what Joe was talking about was how uh, we do risk assessment, okay? It's not based on statistics, okay? It's not based on actual cases of cancer. It's based on a probability that people could have an increased risk of getting cancer. Okay, Mary, I, I want to uh, just pick up on this. 
there is a report about the progress of the fire. Now, we have concern that these particles can become airborne if they're hit by the landfill fire. The rate the fire has been progressing, I understand that these things take time, but... Uh, I, I don't think there's been conclusive evidence of the movement of, of the SSE. That's my understanding, is that there are differing opinions on that. We've heard the EPA say that it's planned for the fires, the isolation barrier but the radioactive wastes have not been properly identified. The EPA currently doesn't know where they're all at. So what is the contingency? Because you guys are in charge of the radioactive waste and you make it sound as if you're not gonna do anything until the fire is at the doorstep and that's not comforting to a lot of the folks here. That's the We're not waiting until it's at the doorstep. We're on a timeline, okay, to make a decision regarding an isolation barrier uh, within the next couple months. And then the 14 to 18 months is the time frame for the design to be completed. It just, it would have been nice if it was done two years ago. But it's extending the length of this and it's excruciating to this community. I guess with what you know already, how many of you would be willing to buy a house right near this particular site? I wouldn't have any qualms with regard to radioactivity contamination, no. And I actually have quite a bit of family in this area, so not, not right in Bridgeton, but fairly close, St. Charles, neighbors. Yeah, I mean, you can't tell me that you would buy a house in the backyard of this landfill. I don't believe it. I don't believe anybody here would have the guts to admit that they wouldn't want to live here. Yeah, it would be nice if we could schedule when the stench is coming rather than abruptly being awakened in the middle of the night because you smell the crap coming through your windows and you're thinking, what the heck, am I dreaming? Yeah, I'm living Thank a nightmare. You. I have something to say. Do you have a question about risk assessment? I have something to say, yes. I was born and raised in Spanish Village in 1971 to 1977. I buried my 12-year-old daughter to a glioblastoma brain tumor. I have three other children at home sick. And you want to live here? You honestly want to live here? No. Tell me, do you? Because I can't physically bury another child, OK? I, I can't. And you tell me you want to live here. Nine eighteen here, Big Five Fifty KTRS. Joining us now is Russ Naki, Vice President of Communications for Republic Services. Your company owns the Bridgeton landfill, which has been in the other uh, the news. Yeah, you know, I just want to leave your your audience with uh, with this point: Bridgeton landfill is safe. It is in a managed state. We're going to continue to manage that reaction, and eventually, it will self extinguish. It would, so the fire will just burn out naturally? Eventually, we believe that it'll self-extinguish. Before yes. it gets to the nuclear waste? Absolutely. Russ Naki, Vice President of uh, Communications, uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. This is a good fight. This is a really good fight. So one of the things you said is you didn't have any training. Well, guess what? Today's your lucky day. And you have to take all of the beliefs you once had about how change happens and just throw them out the window. So Dawn, you want to start? Hi, my name's Dawn Chapman, and I'm just a mom. Um, I have three kids. This is not a career choice. It's not where I thought I'd be right now. Um, 
respect, I got a little emotional because I can't. It's not the fact that Lois Gibbs is here. I think it's the fact that we need you. Sorry, I'm crying. Uh, we all take turns crying. People don't see that, that we really are just moms and we're scared. Well, I call myself the accidental environmentalist. You know, it's a story of literally thousands and thousands and thousands, mostly women across the country who never thought they would be. And then, blah. Just pass the word around. Nobody, we're not going to do anything violent. We're just going to keep them in the house. Nothing more than that. Body barricade the doors, OK? Don't good enough. And don't let them out. OK, pass the word. Good enough? Yeah. That's all? all right. Nobody else. This work just in, two federal environmental officials are being held hostage at the Love Canal Homeowners Association's headquarters. People there stirred up by an announcement that residents' chromosome damage may be linked to toxic chemical exposure. If we do not have a disaster declaration Wednesday by noon, then what they have seen here today is just a Sesame Street picnic in comparison. President Carter will sign the pact committing $15 million in federal funds to buy up the homes of Love Canal residents. I want to recognize the grassroots leader of the Love Canal residents, Lois Gibbs. Without her impassioned advocacy, and this agreement might never have come to pass. There must never be, in our country, another Love Canal. Thank you very much. It is possible for you to win what you want, but it's not possible to win it all at the same time. It's a long-term, short-term thing, and you have to be disciplined about what you're doing. And so in order to set those goals, you need to figure out goals for what and really put together a plan of action. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. 